what I decided to do, I want to show you some different openings. So it will be a mixture of studying many different openings. And at the end, we'll also do some end game work. Okay. So today I won't be just showing you one game. I'll be showing you many different openings. So you can pick that, you know, what you want to play. Maybe you will like something and you can ask some questions. Okay. So the first opening I want to show you is the D4 as white. Okay. What to play when opponent plays this move? E6. First of all, uh, please raise your hand if you know which opening now Black is trying to play here. Yes? Queen's Gambit. Queen's Gambit. We have two Queen's Gambits. Declined. Okay? Declined. Okay? So that's a Queen's Gambit declined opening. It says declined because he's not accepting it. Okay? Because if he takes, that would be accepted. Okay? All right. So now he plays declined. Now, knight c3, knight f6. First, we're going to look at the move knight f6 because this is the most popular move. And then we're going to look at the move bishop e7 as well. Okay? So, knight f6. Again, I'm showing this for white side, okay? So, you take c takes d5 because it's, it's important to take here right away because you don't want this pawn to be hanging, okay? And you kind of want to have a fixed structure, so you know what kind of structure you're going to have here. So you take, okay? There are two types of possibilities here. He can take back with a pawn, or he can take back with a knight, okay? If he takes back with a pawn, that's the main move. Taking back with a knight, it's, it's a playable move, but white is slightly better after e4, because after capture, uh, white has the control of the center. So he's just slightly better, okay? But now takes bishop to g5, pinning the knight. Now, if he plays this move, this is bad move. If he just does something like this, what are you going to do? Take the knight. If he takes back, he will have a terrible pawn structure. Very bad. And if he takes with the queen, we pick up the central pawn. Okay? So remember, we go bishop g5, pinning him, and creating a threat. But now, there is a trap here. Let's see if you know this trap. If he goes here now, can you take the pawn on d5? Question is, it looks like a pin, right? It looks like a relative pin. You take on d5, and he cannot take back because we win his queen. Uh, this is a pin, right? A relative pin. And if can, my question is, can you take this pawn? Would that be a good move here? No, no. No? Okay. Why? Bishop to uh, b4 uh, check. Oh, no. Oh. Yeah, knight takes knight. Knight takes knight. Look at this bishop line. Takes bishop takes queen. And bishop to uh, b4. Bishop he check. Has to give up the queen. Absolutely. He has to give up the queen. I've seen so many chess players fall for this trap. He takes check, and guess what? At the end, he just picks it up. Got it? He just picks it up. Everybody understand this? All right, let's go back and do this again, because I want to make sure everyone here knows this, and they never, never fall for this trap, OK? D4, D5. C4, E6. As soon as he plays, if, if somebody asks you here, what is the name of the opening, what you should say? No, at this point. Do you, do you, do you know? <laughs> OK. Well, it's <laughs> the answer is undecided. We don't know yet. After the second move, we would know which opening is this. Okay, So we don't know the opening yet. Because there could be three, four, five different openings. Let's see. How many different openings now black can play from here on? So once we did this one, e6. It's very important for you to know a lot of these names and at least a couple of moves of all the openings. You don't necessarily have to play them, but just knowledge will make you a better player and more comfortable. Okay? Like I play a couple of openings, but I know most of the lines and the names. It makes you feel more comfortable. Okay? And if you know ideas from one opening, you can sometimes use in another opening. Okay, so queen's gambit decline. What would be another choice here for black? Yes, c6. c6. 
That will be which opening? Slav. Slav defense. Next. There are at least a couple of more opening choices here. 9 f6, I don't know if that's a particular opening here. But there are a couple of more, couple of more. We already did this, right? D takes c4. We talk about queens, gamut, except that's already three, right? The client accepted Slav. But there are a couple of more. Yes, please. Uh, knight to c6. Excellent. And what is this one? Chigorin. Chigorin. Russian Grandmaster. Chigorin. Okay? So this is also very tricky. You have to know it. it it's not a very common uh, opening choice, but it was played with, uh, uh, by Russian Grandmaster Morozevich. And I think he played against Kasparov even. So he wasn't afraid to play against even, you know, the best player. So uh, we have four. There is two more here, two more openings. C5, C5 it's, it may have a name, but it's very uh, unorthodox and not so good, yeah. There might be a name. Yes, please. You also have a bishop to f5. I'm not sure of the name. Uh-huh. Bishop is called Baltic. OK, this is the Baltic, OK? Uh, I have a friend. He's about 2,200. He likes to play this opening a lot. So this is his opening. Anybody plays, he goes to the Baltic. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. The Baltic, yeah. yeah. Well, very tricky. Very tricky. Because if you don't know what to do, it's, you know, so what I'll be doing, I'll be showing you a little bit of how to play against these openings, okay? But first we are working on the Queen's Game deck and the last one. And who can find the last opening he can play here? That's five or six already. We have one more, the last one. It's a gambit. E5. And this opening is called? Yeah, it's not Fakhir, Al Albin, Albin Gambit, okay? In total, there are about 10 to 12 openings, the most, they can play against d4, okay? So we just learned the six of them already, okay? That the first few moves. But, okay, we are working on this one. c6, knight c3, so you take, he takes, and remember, you go bishop g5, and here you don't take on d5, okay? You don't take on d5, okay? Because it's a trap, okay? Everybody understand how the trap works? Don't take. You play e3. Now, when you play e3, you are threatening again. It's like you're re renewing the same threat now, because now you have an escape square for the king to go to, okay? Now you go c6, bishop d3, bishop e7, and now, most of the players play knight f3 here, but that's not what I'm going to recommend for you. I'm going to recommend for you this setup with knight g2. This was played by world champion Petrosian, and also Kasparov played a couple of times as well. Okay? So this is a little bit more uh, active setup, and you will see the reason. Castles, queen c2. This is your setup, remember. Bishop is supposed to be on g5, bishop on d3, knight here. This is your setup if anybody plays the queen's gambit declined, okay? This is your setup. Now he goes here, you castle, and now normally in this kind of positions when you have a knight on f3, the way that you play here is you go rook b1 and b4, okay? You start this minority attack idea. This is the most common way to play. Do a minority attack, okay? But with the knight on e2, you're not going for minority. You're going for the central attack in the center. Now you want to play a4 and e5 and start attacking in the center. Okay? This is how I play if somebody plays this opening. Now, the point is you want to play e4. If you had put the knight on f3, then you cannot play e4. So you understand why we do this? Now he goes knight g6. And now, rook ad1. By the way, this is a uh, game of a Kasparov here. Kasparov Barua from 2000. Kasparov is white against the Indian Grandmaster Barua. So if you want to uh, search this game, so you can find it on chess games and many websites. And chess space, of course, if you have. Kasparov is white against Barua. So now he plays rook ad1. You can ask me, why? Why do you play this now, right? But there is an idea behind it. 
you want to have it the center protected here okay because you're ready to push e4 and when you push e4 you want that rook to be on d1 okay so he goes h6 bishop takes f6 bishop takes f6 bishop takes g6 we just give up our two knights and now the move is e4 we can take this pawn but we don't want to do that that would be a mistake because if you take this one he's going to take this one okay if you take that one he's going to take that one okay so you play e4 and now if he takes you take now do you see he has one two if you didn't have your rook here you see what would have happened he would have picked up your pawn on d4 and say check okay he would have picked up your pawn and say check so you would have find yourself in trouble okay so you don't want that to happen that's why you play rook ad1 that's the real reason behind it so now he plays g5 now when the pawn is on e4 your next idea is to play e5 to push you push him back now he goes here f4 now attacking on g5 now he takes knight takes f4 and now as you can see white is very active here there, there is a weak square on g6 for him to go to so he goes rook f8 and now plant the knight in on g6 he takes take bishop e6 and now we reach this position now what is the best move here for y what should be the next plan here what should be the next plan here for white What should be the next idea here, huh? <coughs> Spend some time. Spend some time. Well, but where 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 are you gonna go? Yeah, yeah you're. Bishops are there for black. You know, yes. When you put your white knight on F8, or I'm sorry, take the bishop on E7. Okay, but then he takes. My knight is actually better than the bishop at this moment, and also I'm, it's very likely I can take this later too. So I'm not in hurry to take this. I, I would look at it and see what piece is not active. Mm -hmm. It's my uh, knight on c3. Excellent. So I want him to get in the attack, so uh, pieces are pointed toward the king side, so I want him to go over the king side. So he's going to go to e2 and then f4. So Excellent e2, suggestion. Excellent. excellent move. That's what Kasparov played. 92, <laughs> very good, playing like Kasparov. <laughs> and not <laughs> if you do it more often, then you're going to see a lot, of, uh, a lot of wins. Anyway, the idea is absolutely, you point out exactly what we needed to do here. If you look at the position, our knight is perfect, queen is, is you know, more or less okay here, rook is on the best square it possibly can be, but what is the knight doing here? And this is a question you have to ask yourself. Do you, do you do that? Like when you're playing a game, do you sometimes look at your pieces and see that which piece is doing anything? Or you always have to try to find the piece that is not doing anything and try to improve it. Okay? That's the key to uh, have better, uh, better results to see if you can improve okay? the pieces. So you go here. Now it goes here. And now, what is the idea here? It looks like if we go here, he has this. But does this really work? Does this really work? Yeah, because the knight 
Aha. Uh -huh. But OK, which one is the best move here? Which move? Take with the queen. Take with the queen, yes. Queen takes f5. Because when he takes back, we go 97 check. And a king moves away, we pick it up. All right? Excellent position, OK? Two extra knights and a pass pawn on an e-file is going through. Excellent. All right? Now, I want to go back and review this, OK, with you. Because, OK, most likely he's not going to play bishop f5, OK? He's not going to, he's going to play something like this. But here, I would recommend eliminating this bishop. And you play this position, very comfortable advantage for white, OK? Because you have this excellent knight that is sitting on g6. He cannot remove it. You can, you can have some ideas like g3, king g2, h4, h5 to plant this knight in here. So it's just a comfortable position. It's not like you're winning. You're slightly better here, but very comfortable. Okay? So we're going to go back and review this okay, with you. And I want you to reach this position. Okay? So, all right. Okay. So we're going to start from here. So go ahead. You play the moves for white. First move. Uh, D4. D4. D5, please. C4. Excellent. E6. Now, next. Knight C3. Knight C3. OK. You want to go next? OK, you will be next. Go ahead. Now, what's the move here? Knight C3, Knight F6. Remember, we are trying to get a fixed structure. OK? We don't want him to take us and, you know, the structure is, we have to think about him doing that, okay? We don't want that. So what do we do now to avoid this? Because he wants to take it, right? So you try to take it, okay? You try to take it. Now he takes back. And now, what is the next move? Now, go ahead, yes. Aha, uh -huh. bishop g5, pinning the knight, very good. And now threatening to take, and now he goes here. The question is now, can we take on d5? No, because of the trap, okay? Remember the trap, everybody remembers the trap here? Okay, great. So what is the correct move? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot take, right? We know that. E3, of course, of course, natural. In openings, you play natural moves, OK? It's, uh, most of the time, if you're going to make a, a natural type of move in opening, it's dubious move, OK? Most of the opening moves should be natural looking moves, OK? Most of the time. Now he goes here, c6, and now? No, no, bishop d3. OK, bishop d3, and next move? White. For white. Black plate here. Queen to c2. Queen to c2, or it doesn't matter. You can start with queen e2, queen c2, or knight g2. There is absolutely no difference here. Okay, I did this, but it doesn't matter. And next move, we go queen c2. Okay, okay? so we reach this position. Now he castle. He goes here. Now, king is in the middle. What are we gonna do? Castle. Now he goes back here, and now. No more minority attack, because with the knight on e2, minority attack is not effective, because you need the knight on f3 if you're going to do minority attack. Okay? Again, minority attack when you push the pawns on the queen side. Here you go for the other plan. And which plan is it? f3, yes. Excellent. f3, the idea to play e4. When you play this setup, if your opponent doesn't know this, he's going to feel very uncomfortable. Okay, I played this position against grandmasters, and you know they didn't know exactly what to do, and it's, 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 it could be it could be a trouble. Okay, because you know exactly what you need to do. That's the good thing. You play f3, you're gonna play e4. Your plan is very clear, and having a clear plan is a big advantage in the opening and middle game stages. Because for black, he's trying to see, okay, how can I try to defend against this plan? Yeah, because obviously black cannot attack here. He is on defense here. And that's where you want to be at. You put pressure. Black is defending. Knight g6. And now, here we are not rushing to play e4, OK? We are not rushing. So which move we have to play here first? Yes. Rook d1. Rook a d1. Purpose? Why we do that move? To protect the uh, d4 board. Absolutely, yes. 
because also that's the only piece that is sitting here in the corner, right? That's the only piece. Looks like your, uh, your, uh, your other pieces are in the game. All your other pieces are in the game. This is the one that is sitting there. So we don't want it to be there. We want it in the game when we start the attack. Now, he goes h6, questioning your bishop. And now, what do you do here? Yes? Bishop takes f6, correct? Bishop takes f6. Next. Now you give up your bishop. You better have a good plan, yeah? Because bishops are more valuable, a little bit more valuable than the knights. So what is the idea now? No, yes? G6. You take the other knight. You take one knight, then you take the other knight. You give him weak pawns. Perfect. Now, the question is, what do we do now? Yes? Now it's time to e4. And if it takes us, you see the reason why I put the, we put the rook on d1, right? So we don't have that pawn on d4 hanging, OK? So every move in the opening should have a purpose, OK? Should have a purpose why you play the move, OK? We don't never just make moves. There has to be an ID behind it, the purpose. Got it? Perfect. So he played g5. Now, continue. Couple of more moves needed, yes. Uh, push the pawn, e5. Push the pawn, right? That's your goal, remember. When you play f3, e4, your goal is to play e5. OK? Everybody understand that idea? You play f3, e4, you want to play e5. That's what you're trying to do. He goes back here, and now. What's next? Perfect. Opening up the line, right? We have a rook on f file. We don't want that f file to be closed, right? By playing f4, we're going to allow our rook to get even more active. Takes. And now. There is a weak square. When you see a weak square, yeah, your knight can jump in into that square, you go for it, right? That's why there is, if the pawn was on h7, the evaluation of this position would have been completely different. If this pawn is on h7, block is absolutely fine. Absolutely fine, OK? Probably not better, but at least equal. And in fact, in the long run, when the pieces come off the board, he has two bishops versus two knights, he will be better. Because having a two bishops versus two knights in the end game would be a pretty good advantage for him. But that one pawn makes a big difference, OK? Because the g6 square is available for your knight. So we go in, he check, we take back, he goes here. And this is a crucial moment. Realizing that one of your pieces one of your pieces not developed that well, and it's not doing so much here. And you try to improve it, OK? And in this particular position, that piece is knight on c3. Correct. And what do we do with the knight? Very good. e2, queen d7, knight f4. That's it. Clear advantage here. And if he plays bishop f5, this is a blunder, but I was just showing you, you know. This is a blunder. What do you do? Take with a queen. Perfect. He takes back, fork him. Fork him and win it. Excellent job, okay? So he cannot do anything, okay? So remember that. He cannot do anything. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to look at another idea for black. Now, if black doesn't want to allow this system. He can actually do that. If he, he can actually prevent you from playing this setup, OK? By starting with the move bishop e7. Because when he does this, obviously you cannot go bishop g5, because he'll just take you. And if you play knight f3, then he transposes to the normal queen's gamma decline. But remember, we want to have a knight on e2. We don't want to have the knight on e3. So a lot of people, to avoid this, they go bishop e7, including me. If I decide to play this, I play this sometimes. If I play the QGD, 
Queen's gamut decline. They play this setup. I go bishop b7 here because I don't want to allow the other line because the other line is more risky. So I start with this move. Okay? But now, in this case, I will show you to take. He takes bishop f4. c6. Now when he plays c6, uh, ultimate goal here is to play bishop f5 for black because in this kind of structure his bishop is the worst piece. Light square bishop on c8 is the worst piece here, okay? And he would like to get rid of this bishop, okay? Exchange it for your bishop, okay? Because uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't have that many squares to go to. So you'll see now, you that's why when he goes here you go queen c2 We'll make a couple of more moves, you'll see why. You go here. See, it looks a little bit strange because it looks like this diagonal is really open for the bishop. But there are no good squares to put this bishop on. You don't want to put it here. You don't want to put it here. You cannot put it here. And what is the bishop going to do here on g4? So it looks like really this bishop is great, right? It's got all this scope here. But this is a bad piece for him. And the key is... It's considered if black can accomplish exchanging the light square bishop with your bishop, it's equal position. Okay? So these positions, if we take out the bishops now, black has absolutely no problems. Okay? But your goal is to prevent that. Okay? Your goal is to prevent exchange of the dark square bishops for black. Okay? Any questions about this? Uh, I'm sorry, light square. Uh, you have to prevent him from exchanging the light square bishop. I'm sorry. Yes? What, what about if black plays uh, b6 pawn? B6? Oh, and then made we can c6. More available. I know, but you, uh, as soon as you play b6, you're worse in this position because you created a big weakness here. So I will develop. I can just develop, and you just, you're always going to have some problem with this pawn because the pile is half open, you know? I can double up my rooks. As soon as you touch the b-pawn, black is worse. Even if you exchange the bishop and everything, he's just going to be, you know, uncomfortable. You know, like, look, you go here. I'll just show you. Take, take. You can just play three to stop this knight from coming in. And now you have all this kind of, this kind of ideas. You jump in with this. It's so easy to play. Rook c8, putting pressure. It plays by itself, you know. The moves, they play by itself. That's why. Okay? All right. Um, now, uh, so you go bishop d3. Now he goes knight bd7. I'm going to show you a very, very cool idea here for white. Rook e8, castle. Now, after you castle, you have a very strong threat. A thread that will give you basically a winning position. You will win some serious material here. So here he needs to be very careful because this trap it's not uh, it's not known that much. Okay. So let's say your opponent just makes a move like this, bad move. Do you see the idea now? Okay. We have one person who knows this idea. Did you see this in a book or? Not not. Oh, you just you just saw it? <laughs> Did you see the whole sequence? Um, like it's only a two-minute sequence, so. Well, <laughs> okay. Well, let's give everyone a couple of minutes to think about. It. We'll we'll go over it. There is a little bit more into it, but okay. but I think you probably have the right move here. So, let's think about it. White makes a move, and suddenly, he has like a serious advantage here. Very very serious advantage here. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> okay, okay. 
it, it's very unexpected. R suddenly, you, if you make this move, your opponent will be like, where this come from? It will be a total shock. I've seen this, I've done this before, and I've seen uh, you know, in, re in real games this idea. Okay, Julian, wait. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Just uh, eat your food first. <laughs> okay. Next class, I'll have something very difficult. <laughs> Knight d5? Knight e5? Knight d5 would be a normal move, but it wouldn't be winning or anything. The move you make, it actually will turn the tables. It will give white a winning advantage. Really? Winning advantage, yes. I mean, still technical, but like you'll be up, up exchange. The, the worst line, you'll be up exchange for no reason. So basically, you'll be up two pounds. OK, any ideas? Yes. Excellent. Correct. Is that your idea? <laughs> Knight b5. Now, if he takes bishop c7. <laughs> you see that? <laughs> and I think I saw this in a Ben Feingold lecture. Uh, might have been some time ago, but I, he went over the same track. So oh, OK. It's, I, it just hit me what you were thinking about. And I'm like, I was looking on the king side, and I couldn't see anything. And then, and yeah. The queen kind of stuck there. Stuck there, the yeah. It just seemed like... So yeah, you, you want to do this, and also you have this threat, too. Yeah. But let's say he goes rook f8. This is the idea. Let's say he sees your threat. He doesn't want his queen to get trapped. What do you do now? Because knight c7 is not good here. He goes rook b8. Okay, if you have the move, raise your hand. Yes, what's the move? Bishop c7. Uh-huh, correct. Bishop to what? c7. Okay. Attacking the queen. Queen has to go here, right? No squares to go to. And now we go knight d6. Chopping the queen. He has to take it, no choice. And guess what? The rook is trapped now. So you win exchange, no compensation. Very cool trap. Okay? That you could uh, win a lot of games with. Knight to b4. Knight to b5, very strong. Yes? Uh huh. Excellent. So it's a real, real example here. And you, 2070, right? Yeah. And you were what at that time? 1600. 1800. So, excellent. Now, I've seen this happen a lot. This is a pretty common idea. It not only plays h6. I mean, there are other moves also he can try to play. A f against a5 also this works. A5 they play sometimes to stop this. Again, same idea. Okay. Okay. My next question now, for a moment, let's turn the board. And let's say you're playing block here. You see the threat. How are you going to stop it? What are you going to do to stop the threat? In fact, this move is just a very natural move. 
Yes? A6? Yeah, but <laughs> A6 would be uh, like uh, really trying to stop it, but, but <laughs> uh, it does weaken your dark squares, OK? It does weaken your dark squares. So I'm not absolutely sure about A6. The main move here, you, the, the reason you go 9bd7, rook e8, because you want to uh, clear this square for your knight, OK? Because your knight actually wants to go to f8, so your bishop in some point can get out. And in some point, your knight can jump in here on g6, OK? So this knight f8 is the, the best move for black to stop against the threat. a6 is a way to stop it, but then you create further weaknesses, OK? Now, now in this position, we don't have the other idea that we discussed earlier with f3, e4. But now, we're going to switch back to the minority attack, OK? So minority attack starts with this move, rook b1, threatening to play b4, b5. So he's got to do something. He's got to do something, OK? Now he plays a5, trying to control the square. Now you play a3, controlling the b4 square. OK? Now you're going to be controlling this square. Now it goes knight g6, attacking your bishop. Bishop g3. Now, what is the idea? Isn't the h5 a high idea position? Well, not h5 is a possible move. You could try there. But even if you go here and take my bishop, I just take back with the pawn. It's okay. So I'm fine, absolutely fine, yeah. So they go sometimes bishop d6 here. And now you start the minority attack, OK? The, the reason they call minority because you attack with two pawns versus three. OK, that's the minority. Uh, bishop g4, you can, but knight e5 it's kind of loses a tempo, maybe. Because you can never take because of pawn takes. You lose this h7 pawn. See, I have double attack. I have two pieces attacking on this pawn. So knight bishop g4 loses. Normally, it's not a good idea to play bishop g4 in this position. Sometimes you can. You, I, I, actually, I should say this way. You could play bishop g4 sometimes if you're going to be able to go here and here. Okay? If you're going to be able to do that, then yes, it's okay. Got it? Yeah. So it goes here. Now. Now we start a minority attack. He takes, we take. He takes, we take. Bishop e6 or d7, doesn't matter. You play b5. And what's going to happen after you get a position like this, he's, he has a weakness. See, when we had this here, he doesn't have a weakness, right? It's absolutely fine. But if you can accomplish the minority attack, no matter how you exchange your pawns with his pawns, he's going to have at least one weakness. Okay? In some cases, he's going to have two weaknesses. Okay? Two weaknesses. For example, if, for example, let's do this. So let's say he goes here, we go here, he goes here. Just showing you this is not necessarily a, a very good line for black. But now, how many weaknesses you see for black? I don't like the One, two, right? Two potential weaknesses. So for him, it's important to exchange the A pawns so at least he can have one weakness, okay? 
And it's no one, especially in the Russian chess school, they train you with one weakness. If you play a perfect defense, you should be able to hold. But what do you know? When opponent has one weakness, what do you need to do to win a game? You know? When you have a position like this, excellent, very good. That's the, that's the idea you should know. When uh, opponent has one weakness, your goal is to try to create a second pawn, second second weakness. Okay, so this it will be hard to win by itself because it's not like oh I'm just going to attack, attack, and win the pawn. That's not going to happen because it's equal amount of pieces. So you're always going to attack. He's always going to defend. And his pieces are placed not very bad, so you know they're kind of close to that pawn, you know. So you're not going to be able to win this pawn, okay? In some point, you have to try to create a second weakness, okay? So remember that when opponent has one weakness, you establish the control of that weakness. You f it's fixed, right? You think about how I create a second weakness, okay? Second weakness is very important. You create the second weakness, then you have good chance, okay? So remember that, yes. I'm sorry. So why is the c6 pawn weak? Uh, c6 pawn is weak. It's a backward pawn. We call this a backward pawn because it's not protected by another pawn. See? And now the c file is open. If you can attack on something multiple times, that is a weak pawn. If this pawn was protected by a pawn, then you can attack with so many pieces, but you cannot take. But now, we can attack, bring a rook in, and we can try to attack. So, which move is very important to play here for, for white? This move is almost instantly, almost always, you have to play this move here in this kind of position. Yes? Knight a4. Knight a4, perfect. Yes. Knight is coming in. Now he's trying to defend passively. Keep, continue. Knight c5, excellent. And now you don't necessarily want to play rook fc1 here, okay? Because you're just going to attack. But you want to get your knights in first, okay? Then you want to get this knight in. Then you want to get the rook on a 7. Then you want to put this one here. You don't necessarily want to... Because if you just attack, that's like a standard thing everyone does. They just put and nothing really happens. Because you can put everything you have on c... You're not going to win the c6 pawn anyway. So it's better for you to try to activate your pieces, okay? So you go knight c5, rook b7, knight e5, rook fb1, domination, complete domination here for white. Great. So this is how you play against the queen's gambit declined opening, okay? So if they play now queen's gambit declined, if you play d4, they do this, now you know what to do. Because we went over the both, both scenarios here, okay? Scenario one, more common one, knight f6. Because again, the setup you play, they're not going to be anticipating it so much because, and remember, don't take on d5, okay? And the knight goes on e2, okay? The knight goes on e2 setup, okay? Petrosian setup, and we also, you know, went over the Kasparov game against Barua, so this is how you want to play, okay? Knight g2, he goes here, queen goes on c2, and you castle. And then you go rook a b1, and you play b4, b5. That's what you want to do. So if it goes here, in this, in, in this line with the knight on e2, f3, e4 setup. OK? f3, e4. And don't forget the important move here. You may think that you're ready to play e4 here, but you have to play this move first. Because in other lines that we went over, the, your center is not going to be as solid. So what is the correct move? Rook to d1. Rook to d1. Excellent. First you play this move, and now you're ready to play e4 and e5. h6, take, take, e4. And threatening to play e5. And if he takes, we have the d4 pawn protected, OK? So this is the main line. That's why I want to go over again one more time with you. G5, E5, and F4, opening up the F file. We went over to take, just in case, let's say he plays this move. Let's say he's saying, okay, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to take. 
This move is pretty much losing now. Why? What can you do now? Why you think this move is pretty much losing now? Yes? Excellent, f5. And the threat is he cannot take because we have it defended twice. And now we're going to go f6. And the queen is going to jump in on g6. Okay? So it's very strong. You see this pawn? This, this is pr pretty much over now for him. Then you can go knight g3. So let's say he goes here. You put the knight on g3. You can consider doubling up the rooks. And push f6. Strength, huh? Mm -hmm. Serious strength in the center. And this will give you the space for your pieces. Mm -hmm.